Uh, Cold Miss, thank you for three months. The Tiger's Cucumber, thank you for the resume. What's next then? Um, the rest of this field, or the one behind us. No problem, Matty. Just find it funny. Gothic! Five months! I've never had the chicken box. Apparently it's worse to catch later. It is. Uh, I've had the feeling rather sore from a strained rotator cuff muscle strain. Followed by a not-so-delightful reaction to the meds I was given for the pain. I-61 coming up. Sounds like a lot of fun. What, we're doing the one behind us, or...? I don't know. Can we do... Something else? Where are we? on this field I mean we could swap and do shuttling in tractors if needed yeah let's do that all right let's get them in the combines and we'll shuttle uh Christoph do you want to jump in my combine we'll swap over same with you Matty when you get back Change your scene. Do you want to jump in this and start with Christoph? I don't mind. Yeah? Right. Yeah, you jump in that. Oh, yeah. At least it's giving you something to do while we're waiting. Tractor's filthy. It is. I take it we're selling everything, Motley. Uh, Motley? Motley's not here, obviously. Alright, let me off. I've had a week off. <laughs> Alright, no worries. Your auntie had chicken box three times and then got shingles. Oh my god. I reckon some people are more susceptible to it than others. Do you remember those Dizzy games from Coal Masters like Treasure Island Dizzy? I do remember them. What the sell point is? What is it that you have? Hey, what is it that you've got? Uh, I saw them, I think. Still going, gems. Yeah, we're trying to harvest everything now and sell it. Get all the monies in. Nine million. Where did all that come from, eh? Not sure. Uh, Castaway Elevator. Best place. Good. Hey. Cast. Oh, actually. Uh... Where is that? Jerry's Elevator or cast, Castaway Elevator or High Grain. They're the top selling ones. Jerry's. There's High Grain. Take it to High Grain. It's where is, just, where is uh, it? That's oh, there north, it is. Northeast of the. Next to 12. Yeah. And what are we on? 13? Yes. Not farming. Matty, if you're using GPS, you might want to go up and copy uh, the profile. Not sure if he is at the moment, because he's running an edge, I think. I'm not sure. Or maybe he is. No, no, he's turning. Alright, 
Sounds good. Nope, they're not using it. Um, let's see. Gothic Mew, five months. I've never had the chicken pox punch. Worst catch later, I've done that one. Uh, what's the next one? Finbar, 367, Davy Rabbit. <laughs> what a name. Uh, even Lobster Squirrel Paul. Evening Lobster Squirrel Paul. Mods, it's our fellow nutters. Squirrel Glove Squirrel, yes. Squirrel Glove Squirrel, yes. Uh, thanks for all the fun and fantastic camaraderie. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for the random resub messages. Chewy, 11 months. Hope you had a lovely holiday, Paul. Welcome back. Thank you, Chewy. Wow, has it been nearly a year? What the heck? Golden acorn coming... Well, golden cap acorn coming up for you, Mr. Chewy. And before you know it, it'll be Cosford. Dead Mouse, 32 months from Dead Mouse. Welcome back, Paul. Glad you had a lovely holiday. Always good to chill with my favourite stream of the week, Farm Th Farming Thursday. Thank you, Dead Mouse. What even is sorghum? Nobody knows. Even I don't know. I think it's a crop that they refine into tennis rackets. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Dispro prove it wrong. <laughs> I don't know what they use it for. I haven't got a clue. Maybe probably an oil, I guess. Or something. Can't wait for Cosford, I know, right? Unbelievable how quick the year goes. It's a sweetener, Jim. Really? So is this what they put in, like, Diet Coke and Pepsi Light or whatever? It says there's... 25 species of sorghum. Some species? Why would you yep. call it a species? No idea. Native to Australia, uh, Africa, Asia, Mesoamerica, and certain islands in the Indian something. Ingredient to mix with feed for farm animals, apparently. Is it me or is it getting misty? It is a little bit. The snow is on its way in. Is it snow or is it hail? Can't wait to find out. Almost on 10 million. Mm. Did you do a trick? What do you mean, Spatial Dragon? Good night, Mark. Who's going? Uh, Mark Sterling. Oh, there it is. Good night, Mark Sterling. Used to be. Used to be used in South ages ago to mix syrup and sweetener. Also pre industrial time. I mean. Twitch have just tweeted uh, we've resolved the recent issues with videos buffering and not loading. Thanks for your reports and pitch. We turned it off and back on again. Exactly. Which is exactly what happened with the TV when we got home. The TV wasn't working. Mrs. Wait, what? So you turned it off, turned it back on and it works. Yeah, the TV wasn't working. Mrs. Squirrel's coming in going, I don't know what's going on, it's not working. Wait, what's he doing here? Oh, I think he just picked up some bad crop. There's another kind of crop on here.
Uh, Christoph, I don't know what you've picked up there, but you might have to dump it on the floor. Um, yeah, we came home and the TV was just like... Like, it turned it on. It has a green light on it, but it wouldn't respond to any button presses. So, of course, Mrs. Squirrel's, like, coming in, going, you have a look at the TV, and she's going through my cupboard, digging out batteries for the buttons and stuff. <laughs> and I'm going, what's the problem with it? And she's going, well, the green light's on. I said, all right, so the power's working. And she's like, but it's not responding to any button presses. So, obviously, it's got to be the remote, right? Mm. So, my first thought is, quite literally, have you turned it off and on again? But she, did, she couldn't be bothered with it. So anyway, I went in, I turned it off, I turned it back on, and it all worked. And she was like, oh, you're a genius. And I'm like, not really. Common sense. <laughs> and I came home, and 2 o'clock in the morning, doing the car shuffle, daughter's car wouldn't start. <laughs> like, oh. So she goes into the house in a massive strop. Like, oh, I'm sick of this, blah, blah, blah. I can't afford this, blah, blah, blah. All this nonsense. Uh, why is my drive control suddenly... How do you reverse? Wait, what? This doesn't have drive control. Should have. No, it doesn't. This tractor does not have drive control. Uh, press and hold your drive control button. What, space key? Yeah. If no. that's your button that you normally use. Oh, there you go. It's on now. It must have been turned off for this tractor. So yeah, basically, um, to cut a long story short, her battery gone flat. They'll not be able to harvest in this weather. Yep, her battery gone flat is what happened. Because um, obviously we've been away for a week. So she's like, oh, I can't afford this. I'm like, come on. I said, it's just, the battery's gone flat. It's no big deal. So in the morning, I cranked it over and it started. So I got it going again. And then I drove it up the road, drove it onto a hill and then turned it off and then turned it back on and it started so I put myself on a hill just in case like it wasn't taking any charge from the alternator and it wouldn't start again so I just sat on the hill and it started fine so I thought okay it's probably the original battery from when the car was made in 2008 so I thought I'll just go to Halfords and change the battery it's probably 10 years old nearly mm. so I went down to Halfords and swapped the battery out for a new one and she's like got up this morning what have we been doing my car so I've swapped my battery out oh is it working I'm like yeah well thank you like completely happy compared to the rant at 2 o'clock this morning that's teenagers for you mm -hmm. oh and then a centre console wasn't working right so like the aircon was working the fans were working but a clock and everything in the middle wasn't working so a boyfriend who basically, um, at, for, for a living, he installs entertainment equipment. Like his dad runs a business yeah. installing entertainment systems in houses, right? So he's been an apprentice with them for like two years now. Does the electrics and all the rest of it. So I said to her, we'll get him to have a look, at, check the fuse box on your car, just check fuses. So apparently you check the fuses on the car and it wasn't working. So this centre console with all the clock and everything still wasn't working. So apparently he'd been in there, he checked all these fuses, none of them were blown, blah blah blah. So when I was down at Halfords, with the ba getting the battery done, and I said to the guy, I said, oh the centre console's not working. He said, oh yeah, it's probably a fuse. So I'm thinking, it probably is, but he said he'd checked all the fuses. So I thought, Obviously not. when I get home, I'll just get, I'll, I'll have a look. So I got the manual out, found the fuse box under the steering column I had a look through the manual looked through for like the radio fuse found the radio fuse pulled it out and it was fine so I was thinking hmm okay maybe it's not that simple so I'm looking through all the different fuses and it's like you know heating like power steering you know, the different ones and I found accessories and I thought hmm let's have a look at the accessories fuse so I pulled the accessories fuse out lo and behold black with a big snap in it I was like here we go <laughs> so I dropped in a well, that... I bought some fuses while I was in Halfords as well so I dropped in a new 15 amp fuse and she was she turned up at this point so I turned the key over next thing all of her you know all of a clock comes on a radio comes she's like yay <laughs> you're like yeah, super happy accessories is normally like cigarette lighter and you know extra little bits that you don't necessarily need. I just said to her I said well I thought you know I thought your boyfriend had checked all this 
So she took a picture of the blown fuse and sent it to him and said, like, why didn't you spot this then? Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to go to him now. Like, yep, that's fine. He can take the heat for this one. Just had to change your battery in a 2008 model, 8 10 years, the battery's normal. Yeah. I, I figured, I mean, it, it took a charge, but I just thought, you know, I can't be bothered with if she parks up at a friend for a couple of nights and a battery goes flat and it won't start. I, I can't be bothered with that grief. I'll just chuck a new battery in. It's, I mean, an easy way to check is um, if when your car is running, if you're getting about 14 volts from your battery, then your alternator is working. Well, I knew it was working just from the fact that it charged up the battery in no time at all. But I just figured the battery's old, and if it can't take a week without a charge, then it's probably time to swap it out. I've got brakes, front brakes to do on mine soon. I need to go and buy the parts from uh, Euro Car Parts. They don't know that, but Dad's the best. Exactly, Jim. But, you know, up until then she was going, oh, my car's breaking down, I'm having terrible luck with this. And I'm like, look, I said, this is cars for you. You know, things, especially a car that's nine years old, things just kind of go now and again and you fix them and you move on. You know, I said to her, I've told you before, a car is going to take your money one way or another. That's just a fact of life. Yes. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with a car. Like, her engine's absolutely brilliant engine on it. I don't know, she's just from that generation where there's no such they thing as fixing things. Yeah, yeah, things either work or you throw them away and buy another one. You know, it's, there's no concept of, well, can't we just fix this? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the society that we're living in. You know, that throwaway society where if it breaks, well, you throw it away and you buy a new one. I remember what? doing it with a printer. I got a Lexmark printer years ago. And it was like £29 for the printer. And yeah. you got inks inside of it but then when it when the ink ran out to buy a new ink it was like 40 odd pounds yeah I, I just threw the lot away and went and bought another printer well i bought on the same thing i brought a i bought a brother laser printer once a yeah. color laser printer right 150 pounds mm -hmm. came with all the multiple laser toner inside of it yeah ran it for about 18 months nearly two years and then it said um your, ink, your, your toner's running out. So I went online, and each toner, and it takes four of them, each toner was yeah. £70. Pounds, yeah. Which means £280 worth of toner, or go and buy another one for 150 yeah. quid and get all the toner exactly. again. It's like, what is exactly. going on here? How does this work? This is, I have to throw away a printer to get more toner. <laughs> How yeah. does this work? This is crazy. But yet they include that with the actual printer when you first get it. But, I mean... I don't know. That's just nuts to me. They're just encouraging you to throw th perfectly good machinery away. Yeah, that's true, Ferry. I mean, you know, they are less than... Well, they're about 10% full, but it's just like the squirrels just been saying, even with the toner ones, they're just... It's, yeah, ridiculous. I don't know, I mean, Ferry. I mean, my toner... Like I said, my printer lasted 18 months, nearly two years before. Yeah, toner ones do. The, it went. You know, the, the laser jet ones. I've got a, a HP, HP uh, L200, goddamn old printer, but the, the toner inside it, I've had it for about two years now. You have to empty. Yup, I'm 85% full, so I thought it's gone empty now. Yeah, about 80 now. Is it high grain we have to empty it? Uh, yes. Either high grain or any of the other two. The other two elevator ones or whatever they were. Astronaut Raccoon with three months. JSV Entertainment. Your streams will be needed when four year, fourth year uni commences in September. The stress levels increase. Oh my god. You'll be fine. Truck and Neil, Twitch baby hype didn't hurt at all. Nine months, thank you very much. 
truck and Neil. How do we get into this place? Mr. Gornom, for 10 months, my uh, new goal is now to get a new nut. As always, keep up the excellent work. Thank you, Gornom. Two months away. Idex with a resume. Thank you. Cash going up. Approved coma with 10 months. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've got a HP printer now. And basically, I pay, I think it's four four ninety nine a month or something. And they'll, whenever my ink runs out, they send another one. No. Like it, the machine's connected to the internet, and they know when the ink's running low, and they just immediately dispatch another ink cartridge for you. So you could literally print on it every single day. No, you, you pick a plan, and each plan has a number of pages per month limit. But it right. rolls it rolls over from one month to the next. So if you pick, like for example, a hundred page plan, yeah. and you use sixty pages, you'll roll up forty pages over into next month. Alright, fair enough. So, it basically it's means you can just fix your cost, you know? Yeah. As long as you're not going crazy. You'd be surprised how many pages that you don't use, really. They'll tell you, like, each month they'll say, this is how many pages you printed. And you can see whether you're close to running to your limit or not. If you're not, you just drop down another plan. What printer is a, do you use a printer for? What do I use it? I don't tend to use it very much, Connor. I mean, for example, I printed my boarding passes out. I might print the old letter on it. Um, it mostly tends to be used by the family for school type stuff. Or, you know, my wife would be printing things out. She might print pictures out for, you know, art homework for the kids or whatever. So it, it's not me that tends to be the user of a printer. I don't use a printer very much. Christoph need empty by any chance? Possibly. Print stuff out for the tax man. <laughs> Yeah, you should. I mean, it, you know, laser printers are great. It's just that when the toner, you have to replace it. They're pretty, pretty pricey for toner. You can be hacked anytime surfing on internet, bro. Who, who's that director that R for? Trickerman, thanks for resume. Someone said that a printer on the internet isn't a smart idea and can be hacked. Well, they've got to get through your firewall, but yeah. yeah. If they can hack a printer, good luck to them, I guess. <laughs> What's it like having an Amazon Echo then? Well, think of it this way in a few years, everything's going to be connected to the internet. Well, yeah, your you car, got... your toaster, your fridge. Your TV is already connected. If you've got a modern yeah. TV, it's already on the internet. Yeah. It, modern fridges are often on the internet. But it's, it's all going to be wired, isn't it? It's all going to be connected. Man Maze, 1976. Thank you for 13 months. Just got home time to enjoy the stream. GG, sir. Truckerman, 10 months, another month. Hope you had a good time on vacation. It was great. But one week's not enough. <laughs> there is. Can you imagine using your phone to boil the kettle? <laughs> yeah, but you can't tell it to put water in, can you? 
It's like these, um, what do they call it, like Hive and stuff. There are lots of heating systems now that are online, so you can connect to it over the internet oh, yeah. and turn the heating on. Turn your lights on, turn your heating on. Why would you want a toaster online? I don't know. Put the bread in before you go to bed and then wake up and tell it to toast. And you walk downstairs, it's done. Um, I don't know, James. Why, why would the internet qualify as the best invention of all time? I mean, there's many things that you can... I mean, what about the transistor? The transistor pretty much made it all possible, didn't it? There's so many key inventions. I mean, definitely the, the internet is definitely a key invention, but I don't know if it's the invention of all time. Vidboy, 11 months. Welcome back, Paul. Happy vacation. Got you some time to relax. He did indeed, Vidboy. Well, electricity wasn't an invention, Connor. It was a discovery. Coffee's the best invention. <laughs> about filters. You need filters to filter water. You'd say shoes are the best invention. I don't know. Like, if you think about it, the transistor made everything possible, including the internet. It made computing possible. You know, down to... I mean, we were computing before the transistor, but it made it brought the scale of it down to an order of magnitude that we can actually do things with it properly rather than just having a room full of stuff to crunch a number takeaway's the best invention <laughs> the just app can't argue with that one <laughs> the just eat app why is he stopping it's going on ok he's walking off now like, I'm done, I'm done. Oh, it's swap over. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, 9.30. Confusion. Indeed. Best invention is going to be a half day on Friday. <laughs> Yeah, I know that you can get Uber Eats uh, or McDonald's with Uber Eats. Um, we went to McDonald's the other day and there was a queue of drivers stood inside just waiting to collect McDonald's Really? Orders. Yet yeah, seriously, we walked in and there must have been about eight just, just stood there waiting I find it to hilarious. pick up an order. And they were all Uber. They were all Uber drivers. I find the whole concept hilarious. It's basically the classic, mm -hmm. you know, are you cash rich and time poor or time rich and cash poor yep. what you've got though is a situation where somebody's got the money but they don't have the time to go to the takeaway exactly. and there's a guy that's got the time but he doesn't have the money it's a yep. classic exchange right there I mean paper parchments was a significant invention in human history without that we couldn't properly pass on knowledge and exchange ideas and science and stuff through the generations. So paper was very, very significant. Anybody who's played Civilization knows that. Why don't Uber drivers go through the drive-thru? I don't know, that's a good question, Baz. Why don't I they go through don't the drive-thru? I don't think they're allowed. I don't think they were allowed. Well, they're actually banned. Yeah, they've to, they've got to go in. They've got to go in to pick the order. I don't get that. No, me neither. Why are they any different to another customer? I mean, from a McDonald's no, perspective, you've got somebody driving up, buying their product, and then driving yep. off. Why does it matter? No idea. Or is it because they come in with, like, can I have 50 burgers, four of these, five <laughs> of them, six of them? Is it just that the order's way too big? In which case, you can no understand idea. that. Anesthetic was the best invention. Huh? Anesthetic was the best invention, says Human Catley. What about, um, 
what about uh, what is it? The discovery of what, what is it? The mold that grows. Oh, penicillin. Penicillin was pretty significant, but that wasn't really an invention. That was a discovery. You can grow that yourself. <laughs> Plenty of Just that in the kitchen. Leave a cup of coffee on the side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Leave a cup of coffee on the side for three months, and you've got penicillin. Although it's it's not the same grade. Because a lot of them are on bikes. Ah, yeah, Black Hawk. So if they're on bikes, then yeah, absolutely, they've got to go in. Fire was a discovery. Wheel was an invention. Yeah, the wheel's significant for sure. Good night, Christoph. Thanks it's, for joining us. Good night, Christoph. It, it is hard to say which ones of these are more significant, you know? They're all significant. They all play a part, though, don't they? That You know, they all build a part of the society that we actually live in today. Exactly. All right, fair enough. There's some inventions that were invented and then didn't take off or didn't grow into something better, but... <laughs> sliced bread. <laughs> Everything's better than sliced bread. What an invention. Yeah, but Texas, people were living in Vegas and Dubai and Texas for hundreds of years, weren't they, before Aircon came along? I mean, people who lived in Egypt thousands of years ago had no Aircon. Pretty certain it was quite hot back then. And they built the pyramids in that kind of heat. I mean, that's you don't need Aircon, it's just an, a convenience. KC3, 11 months. Yay, almost a golden cap. So close, man. Wonder if we're all in. There's a lot of people joined there, so. Garlic bread. I prefer garlic pizza bread, Andy. You know when you take a pizza base and you put garlic butter on it? It's so nice. And you, the only way to top that is what, what ZZ do, is where they put cheese and then they put these caramelised onions on top. Is like a sweet brown. Oh man, they're so nice. Oven. The local pizza place that I go to, if you order over fifteen pound, they give you a free, free garlic cheese bread. Nice. And it's it's exactly that. It's a ten inch pizza base with garlic butter, then cheese, and then garlic butter on top. Of it. It's <laughs> so nice. That sounds honestly. pretty good, actually. Oh yeah. Garlic bread is nice. You can just imagine, like, a load of people are sat at home now that are watching, going, Garlic! Bread! <laughs> hey, Wackaday. Wackaday, how are you doing, sir? Mr. Coombe doing with 44 months. Garlic bread, garlic bread, garlic <laughs> Told bread. You. Told you there's someone. I don't think he likes it, to be honest. He's questioning the word, why you would put garlic with bread. Things in sliced bread. Best Andrew, invention ever. <laughs> Andrew, cool. Thank you for the resume. Steve, would you drink some garlic tea with that garlic bread? No. You ever been a fan of garlic bread? When I first met Mrs. Squirrel, if she smelt garlic, she would start throwing up. Wow. Honestly, and that was that was a bit difficult for me because I loved garlic bread. I mean, seriously loved garlic bread. And so... So if it, you ever it, had an argument, you just have a load of garlic, go around to her house and, Hey, love, how are you doing? <laughs> Bye! <laughs> it, was, it was weird. Basically, over the sort of months and years, she became acclimatised to it and then eventually got to the point where she now likes garlic bread. Which oh, is... Wow, what a transformation. Yeah, but a lot of it happened after pregnancy as well like yeah. after she was pregnant with our first child she a taste was changed and then suddenly she was like i might try a bit of that garlic bread you know it kind of went it started like that mm -hmm. but even now there's some garlic can just completely make her feel sick again yeah. but with garlic bread and stuff she's fine but if i have 
if I have like uh, the proper the proper stuff where they put cloves of garlic into yeah. butter, like like the French when they make garlic butter, they make it like really really garlicky, really the kind where it oozes out your toes and people can smell it for two days. <laughs> you know that kind of strength. It oozes out of your toes. Oh, it does. No, it literally does. Oh you, no, I know. You're sweating out I, your feet. Yeah, I know you can sweat. It's crazy, but she won't go near me for two days if I do that. If I eat that stuff. <laughs> Well, you always know what to do if you have an argument. I, I like garlic bread. Garlic bread's good. Is your line of garlic tea? I've never heard of it. It doesn't, it doesn't actually sound nice to me, garlic tea. I love tea and I love garlic, but I would not put the two together. What about garlic toes? Garlic toes, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it oozes out of your toes. The thing is, if people put garlic butter on bread and have garlic bread, why does nobody do it on toast? Why do you not make why do you not make a piece of toast and then smear it in garlic butter? Why is that not a thing? I don't know if it tastes the same. Well, you know, it's garlic bread but toasted. Yeah, but it is. It's, I mean, it's like the baguettes that you can get that you yeah. you know it's already got the butter in and everything. You bob it in the oven. They come out crunchy, but it's not to the bread inside. It's not toast, is, is it? Toasted. It's just the outside is nice and crispy. Floaty Fat Man does it. He says it would. Same with Floaty Fat Man does that. Four. Yeah. Floaty Fat Man says he does it. Interesting. I don't think I don't think I would. SK Jomberg does as well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Usually have toast in the morning and garlic bread in the afternoon. I find garlic bread works really well with um, like Italian dishes, you know, like uh, lasagna or spaghetti bolognese or anything like that. It goes really nicely. You guys are really making me hungry now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. The problem is, is like my body clock for last week has always eaten at eight o'clock. Like every night at eight o'clock, we went down for food, and today I had to eat before the stream, so I ate at four o'clock, <laughs> and so now I'm just I'm really hungry. Yeah. Because <laughs> my body's going. Um, excuse me, we've kind of missed the eight o'clock thing here. What's going on? I did, astronaut, yeah, all inclusive. The thing is, if we go on holiday, I don't want Mrs. Squirrel cooking. That's one thing, yeah? I don't want to have to cook. That's not a, it's not a holiday for her if she has to cook. Let me put it that way. So I don't want her cooking. And then the other thing is, I don't, like, if you go on holiday, and, and I'm basically paying for the five of us, right? So the food bill, if you're not careful, can be pretty crazy. Because if you go out to a restaurant, you know, five of you can easily bust a hundred euros. Usually okay. more when you add drinks on top. Easily. So you could be looking at 150 euros every night just for the in just for the evening meal, which is over a week the best part of a thousand euros. Yeah, which is a lot oh, of yeah, money. Easy. And then you're not even including you know your your dinners, your lunches, and things like this. So my kind of solution is to go is to find a holiday where it's all inclusive because then Mrs. Squirrel doesn't it's need to cook and I know exactly what my bill is. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can say, this is my bill. I'm not paying any more because they can eat whatever they want, whenever they want, and it's not gonna cost me any more or for drinks either. They can go for ice creams and you know Diet Cokes and lemonades to their heart's content and I do not have to sort of have that argument with them about, well, you've already, eat, you know, you've already eaten 30 minutes ago. You know, it's just so much easier to do that way for me. It's just, it's more relaxed. It's like, yeah. I pay it, and then I go on holiday, and everybody has fun. It works. It's exactly PC Tech. It's like on a cruise ship. It's exactly like that. And that's it. You don't have to worry about cooking. She doesn't have to worry about cooking. And not only that, even if, like, if you don't want any of the food that's in the hotel, you could always go out for a meal. You know? Yeah, but there's so much variety. You can't oh, there is, not yeah. find something that you like, you know?
Getting lots of micro stuff in here. Yeah, I'm getting a fair bit now. Don't know why. Uh, but I've just been informed at 10 o'clock, down tools and ready for the things in port. The things at 10 o'clock, guys? The things at 10 o'clock. I, I don't know what he's on about, but the things that go bump in the night. Possibly. Awesome. We're having a bit of fun. <laughs> Looks that way. Would you build? Would you like to build a PC again? It's not difficult building a PC, big headed. I think if I built one again, I'd probably build a water cool system just to just so I can kind of, you know, do it yourself. Yeah, just to see what it's like. I think it be, could be kind of fun. I can see how people can get into it. Let me put it that way. We're watching the stream in the US, it's almost 10 for you guys, it's 5, exactly. Yep. It's, it's the same for me, uh, Technical Fox, like if I, if I get in bed, like at midnight, chuck on the iPad, and bounce around Twitch, I'll find American streamers. And, you know, for me, it's the early hours in the morning, for them, they're talking about it being early evening. <laughs> it's like, this is so weird. I watched one the other day, and it was American, and it was daylight outside, and I was like, wait, it's pitch black here. Little water cool system just so that you can have that rip moment the first time you turn it on and have a leak. Nah, it's, this is the thing though, uh, Quatty, if, if you're going to do it, water cooled there's certain amounts of equipment that you're gonna have to buy and one of the ones that you can buy is a pressure tester it's 15 it's about 15 pounds and it has a pressure gauge on it and a small pump and you just connect it to the loop squeeze it a number of times the pressure bar goes up if the needle stays there you don't have a leak so when you come to put liquid in it you're a hundred percent sure there are no leaks in that system because it's never going to be under that kind of pressure and that's the way you do it. You don't need to take a gamble by pouring liquid in and seeing if it goes all over your CPU. You can just do it for £15 with a little tool. But there's other there's other tools that you need that... You know, to do water cool systems, you're going to have to buy a few tools and only potentially use them once or twice. Um, I have played Overwatch, Fazbear's, yeah. But, you know, at Gamescom and things like that. I don't play it myself. If you do water cooling, I would close loop on the CPU, wouldn't take it if I had a leak and ruin my system. But a lot of maintenance. There's not a lot of maintenance, really. Occasionally you just drain them, um, change the fluid. There's not a lot of maintenance to them. It's honestly why I love my midnight to local start time slot. EU will be starting the, the day. That's the thing, Ferret you used to stream at like really weird times for a for somebody on that time zone. That's why I used to catch you quite a bit. Uh black moat, it's just normal distilled water normal. Sorry, I was I was just doing that while I was waiting for him Fair to turn. Enough. Is it cheaper to build oh, your own? Yeah, yeah. Um, generally speaking, yes, because you take out the labour cost and you do it yourself. Jules, refresh. They said to fix the problem. But if you build your own, the downside is you don't get a guarantee with the system. And any problems with it are your problems. <laughs> so, you know, there's pros and cons. Are you getting Matty or? Yeah, I'll, I'll go forward to Gazman now. Jules, I wish Twitch hurry up and fix the problem. I'm still getting issues with buffering. They've already fixed it, Jules, they said. They said they've Refresh solved the your problems. Browser.
Don't click the mouse, Matty, because that happens. Good evening, get fresh. Better system on top of last year with an Intel i7-6700. I wish I would have waited for the Ryzen 7. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, technical folks, when if you when if you buy something on a PC within six months, there's something better. You know, that, it's just the eternal upgrade problem. And also, you know, when you are buying something, you can always look online at what's coming. Like there are roadmaps and um, articles talking about things that are coming out six, nine, twelve months hence. You can always see what's coming before you jump in and buy something. Yeah, I mean, definitely the, the thing about building your own system is you, you put it together, you know how it is all built, and if there's a problem, you know how to take it apart. So there is that advantage. You can indeed, astronaut. You can indeed. Do I need any help, Westy? I'm okay. Okay, thanks. One thing you hate about your pre-built PC is AMD processor, but everything else is fine. The thing is, Ferret, is is what um, what's not so obvious about building your own system. Like you say, it is it is like Lego now. Things are a lot lot easier than they used to be, and the scope to damage things is reduced. But most people don't know how to navigate the BIOS and get the best out of the system. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, 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 the kind of BIOS configuration thing is still a minefield when you go in there, particularly when it I comes to the overclocking side. You can do the simple overclocking stuff, but if you really want to get the best out of your system, if you leave it to a specialist, like they, they have great settings that they can give you. Um, but if you build it yourself, most people, I suspect, will build it and never change anything in the BIOS other than a simple overclock. And therefore, they might, there might be 10, 15, 20% more power they could get out of that PC that they are basically wasting because they don't know how to do it. I think it's the, the also the, like, the installation of Windows and stuff like that. I think that puts a lot of people off because some people don't actually know how to install Windows. And when you build the PC yourself, you, you've got to install everything yourself. Yeah. Like all the drivers. I mean, with Windows 10, you don't really have to worry so much nowadays. But back in the old 98 XP days and, and what have you, have to install everything manually. One sounds weird on these. Things. Which one was that? Oh, this one. Yeah. Sounds like a a ship or something like a <laughs> a ship in the distance. Mm. If you can slide a CPU into its socket and mount the cooler, you can also install Windows. You'd, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Considering it's like a what is it an eight? 8 gig download or something now onto a stick and then boot. Yeah. It's not hard.
Just landed your first long haul in JFK. Nice. Did you cheat? Did you accelerate time? Just put your pipe out, Marty. Yeah, but the motherboard manual, Chris, just generally tells you where things are and what things are. It doesn't really... It'll describe, like, each setting of one sentence, but it won't tell you, like, what it properly does or the fact that it has to be balanced with something else, you know? They only go so far. You did it on VATSIM, nice. Did you get coverage? Controller coverage all the way? Or rather, when you were EU and at US? Windows 95 was better. <laughs> than what? Debatable. Better than what? I have no idea. I'm just trying to look now. Oh, uh, the technical fox says someone should build a, an insane PC and install XP. <laughs> and then someone said uh, Windows 95 would be better. Windows ME was the best. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Must be joking. No, it wasn't. I'd probably say the stablest was 98. There's a lot of nostalgia coming out here. If you actually went back to 95 or whatever, you'd probably think oh, twice. 16 bit. <laughs> 16 bit what? textures and colours, no thanks. That one application could completely <laughs> lock up your PC. Yep. Open the calculator, wait five minutes. Calculator opens. Good. Do I miss Anti Windows XP? No. I still use XP on my CNC machine. Jones 1560, get out. Get out. Windows Vista was goddamn terrible. It was released way too early. Anyway, well, not He did put a wink at the end. I think he was joking. Uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, Ferry, I found that out when I uh, updated my streaming PC. <laughs> the new motherboard and CPU wouldn't accept uh, wouldn't accept XP. Or, oh, not XP, Windows 7, sorry. So I had to go with 10. What's 10? How's 10 working out for you? Um, apart from one blue screen, not a problem. Not a problem. I mean, I've got an old start menu now using a program called Classic Shell. Oh, yeah. So Matt I've got keeps like telling the, me to use that. Yeah. So I've, I've got the old style Windows 7 start menu back. I mean, I, I was mentioning this to you the other week that that's the one thing that I hated was the start menu on Windows 10. Um, so I did a bit of research, found a little program that you can actually change or install and it changes it for you. Uh, and I installed it and I was like, that's fantastic. I I'm keeping this installed for life. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, like I said, I've only had one blue screen where it's just completely ripped and it, it comes up and it says, something's gone wrong. Really? I'd have never have guessed. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, it goes, it looks like something's gone yeah, wrong. Exactly. Would you like us to check online for further yeah. details? And you go, yes. And then you sit there for a minute and then it goes, <laughs> we couldn't find anything. And you're like, well, yeah. that was useful. <laughs> and he's like, he does that every five time. Of my life. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I've never not had a problem since. Um, you know, I've I've plugged devices in that on Windows Seven. I'd have to plug it in and install the driver. No, just plug it in, and he goes, "This driver's been installed. Great, thanks, awesome." So yeah, honestly, should I have gone to Windows Ten quicker? Probably. But hey, oh, it is what it is. I've got no choice now. I'm on Windows Ten. So. 
You hate the forced yeah. windstorm crap in town basically built in Adler. Uh Yeah, that. Yeah, I agree with what Get Fresh is saying. Like the uh, Xbox and. Oh, that nonsense. Uh, yeah, you turn yeah, it off. There's, there's a few other bits. I've actually uninstalled them. Uh, I've literally found them where they were installed and I removed them. You, you um, can turn off and get rid of a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, and apart from my FSX doesn't run. But, <laughs> you know, it's not the end of the world, really, is it? But the biggest downside is like the forced update model. It's, yeah. it's that more than anything. But, like I said, it's over, it's done with, I'm on 10, and I'm living with it, I'm getting used to it, and it, I, I was the same when I, I was reluctant to move from XP to 7, I, I was the same as what I've been now with 7 and 10. You like old dog new tricks, like, aren't you? Uh -huh, yeah, exactly, everything changed from XP to 7. Don't like change! Everything has moved, <laughs> yeah, everything had changed, the, the control panel had completely been rewritten, and everything and it was just like I don't know where everything is anymore but I got used to it and I swore by Windows 7 then and I'm, I'm kind of getting the same way with Windows 10 the thing is I've never had a problem with the Windows 10 start bar that people talk about because I never really use it I just hit the Windows key and yeah. tap the name of the thing I want and then click on it that's I've never done anything else I don't yeah. use the start bar uh, yeah I mean it, it wasn't it was really annoying for me because I I love my Windows 7 one where I could pin things to the desktop I know you can pin stuff to the uh, not to the desktop I know you can pin things to the start menu on 10 but not in the same way that you could with Windows 7 and and that was my real bug bearer because I used to just have all my favorite programs that I always use on that pinned menu and then I just open start click on it go that's it Whereas I've got that back now, because I've got that program, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Oh, yeah. But I've got that now, so all I need to do, click on Start Menu, it opens up, and it's exactly like Windows 7. Well, you, you and Matt are like, you use the classic shell. Yes. But I honestly don't have a problem with the Windows 10 shell. I don't feel like I need that. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to go retro in any way, because I can't find anything about the current one that's stopping me doing what I want to do. True. The other thing that annoys me as well, the, it, like I said, it, it's just little minor things. You know on the, the next to the start uh, button, you've got that folder, like your file explorer. Oh, um, when you click on that, it opens up like all your pinned folders and stuff, which I've, I've customised, I've done it now and I've got around to it. But I wish that I could change what that actually opens, so that when I click on that file explorer, it'll open my computer for instance so I can see all right. of my drives or if I click on it it might open my documents or you know uh, my pictures or whatever if I could change how that button acts it'd be fantastic you know but can't you just create your own shortcuts though no well you can you have to pin them to the thing but then you've got two of the buggers and I only want one I only want one on there Steve you can do that ferret how but it's... tell me right now I will stop this tractor and tell me <laughs> I want to change it. I want to change it so it just opens my documents. Because at the moment, it opens up the pinned things. You can change it where it starts in the folder options. There you go. Um, what do I think of the i9, James? Um, don't see a tremendous use for it for most people, to be honest. Right, I'm pulling over. I'm I'm testing something right now. I see the I see the i9 James is like it's a bit like it's a bit like the electric cars currently. Like they don't really they're not really useful for most people at the moment, but they will be. Yeah. So the i9 is like this CPU where you won't get the best out of it initially until the software catches up with it properly, and then yeah, in a few years it'll be probably the best thing to have, but at the moment I don't think it is. Particularly not for gamers.
<gasps> you can! You can change it. There you go. Vroom, you're an absolute diamond. What cloud storage do you use? I, I use Dropbox mostly for, for my cloud stuff. I have one of those one terabyte ones. Rome, you're an absolute genius. I've changed it, it works. All you had to do was ask, Steve. I know, right? That was one of the little bug bits. I mean, I've done all my pinned folders that I'd like, but it's just so annoying. I just wanted to open my computer and that's it. Yeah, don't worry, Ferret, you would have done. <laughs> Bot smacked. You could have put it in Squirrel. You've, 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 there, start again, Steve. You've got more than three months on subs. Exactly. You could have posted, just posted it here. here. I'm sure there's plenty of other people that are scratching their heads thinking, oh, actually, that's not a bad idea. In before, can you link that, please? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Jules, when are you get all the fields and sell all the produce and stock? Um, well, we're on 17 million right now, which is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I've just been warned. Five minutes remaining. Five minutes remaining. Five minutes remaining. Five minutes remaining. Thank you. It's like scrappy challenge. There you go, ferret. So anyone who, anyone who wants to know how to change that file explorer button next to the start menu, there you go. I like Click the URL. Link. How to set file, how to set start location file explorer Windows 10. Like the URL is just ridiculous. Yep. It's the, what do you call it? Easy URLs or whatever it is. Good night, Fluke Grizzle. Good night, Fluke. <laughs> 